What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Excited for today's episode because we are out here early. We are walking down the shoreline of this river and we are making our way up here to this big spillway where we are hoping to link up with some fish. Um, I'm mainly targeting the striped fish today, that being the white bass and the striped bass. You know, it's springtime, this is the time of year where you can catch those fish. I haven't been down here to this spot in a while. Um, it's been a little bit too high for me. For my liking, it's been raging, but the water has come down. It's cleared up a good bit that I'm seeing, and it just it just looks good. And it's been it's been warm, and uh, I just feel like it's a perfect recipe for us to catch some fish today. I've caught a lot of fish here in the past, and I'm looking forward to doing so again this morning. We're currently walking across some pretty sketchy stuff. I mean, look at all these sticks and debris that have washed up since the water was up really really high last week. I gotta make sure I don't poke my toe into something like a snag hook or a snapping turtle or something that could be up here on the bank but we're almost up here to where we're gonna be fishing at and I'm excited to get a line into the water I've got two rods with me I've got my green pole my ACC crappie sticks this is a six foot six inch one piece and I've also got a fly rod with a clouser minnow and hopefully we can catch fish on both so guys if y'all are excited to join along with me on today's fishing adventure as I traverse across these sketchy rocks do me a favor hit the thumbs up button subscribe to the channel and let's see we can get some big striped fish on the bank and on our stringers and then on our tummies. Let's go. Oh baby, right there. There we go. Get up here. Woo! All right. That did not take long at all. We are on the board. Our first white bass of the day. We're fishing this really um, hard current seam. It seems like to me that there was, seemed like to me that there was going to be some. They'd be stacked up right there. It's like the only calm water. It's not that calm. But it's calmer than the rest of it. There's our first white bass of the day. We're going to keep some. I'm gonna throw the first one back for good luck. Oh, there's another one right at the bank. My top jig was out of the water. My top jig was literally out of the water when that fish bit it. That was on the chartreuse curly tail grip. That's her second white bass right there, guys. That's awesome. Man, if they're that thick, I should be able to catch them on my fly rod. We'll definitely bust that out here in a little bit. I'm gonna start off with the conventional tackle. I have a stringer in my pocket. I honestly wish I had a five gallon bucket. The walk is so treacherous. I just didn't want to haul out a bucket of fish. I had to worry about spilling. Whoop! <laughs> oh man, we're gonna have some babies. We need to get some bigger ones. We need to find some bigger ones. They've all been little white bass. Well, the first couple of white bass I caught were not that small. That's a tiny little guy. There we go. That's a better one. A little bit better. He's a long, skinny guy. I guess just spawned out. I want one just a little bit bigger than that. A little bigger than that, which is like my first one I caught. And uh, I'm gonna throw him on the stringer. Start getting that situation figured out. There we go. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, that's a big one. There we go. That's what we want right there. I was just shaking it right here in the current. That is a big one. Oh, baby. That's the white bass we were after right there, guys. Big old white bass. Oh, baby. Get up here. Oh, watch out for my fly pole. Now that is the tank white bass that we are after. Got a little bit of something going on up there on his dorsal. That is nice. So what I'm figuring out, I don't have a lot of warm room to work with. There's enough current that I can just literally just shake it right here in front of me. And um, they'll come and get it. <laughs> I don't have to reel it. That's awesome. This one's definitely going on the stringer. 
I just gotta figure out how I'm going to attach it to something so that they don't swim away. I could tie it to my bag. Hope it's long, yeah, it's long enough. This is just some, uh, some rope that I found the other day. I threw it in the back of my truck in case I ever needed it. And today we need it. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna put him right here. And I'm gonna tie him to my camera bag. And as long as I don't get too many fish on here, they shouldn't pull the camera bag in the water. That should be good. All right, one big and down. There we go. Oh, that's another good one. That's another good keeper. Another good keeper, just finessing it down the current seam. Oh yeah, maybe it's a top jig. Man, these are some hard fighting fish. One might grab that bottom jig if he ain't. Be careful. Woo, flip him up here. There we go. Second good keeper white bass. He bit the uh, the trusty orange and chartreuse crappie magnet. Whenever I'm double jigging, if I'm using a grub, I usually like to have the grub on the bottom and then, you know, a non-grub plastic on top. I feel like sometimes when you have the grub on the top jig, it doesn't really swim right. And I like to shake it. I like to impart secondary action so you put that crappie magnet on top and you can just let it dance in the current. Kind of zigzags back and forth. Oh, there we go. You know, I kind of changed my angle a little bit on that one. I was reeling up the banks of the current. I'll kind of try to point this out to y'all. Let go, don't bite my jig tail off. Another nice little white bass, not gonna keep. So obviously the current is ripping right through here. But then about right there my finger's pointing at is where it's bending and it's making a sharp turn towards the bank and then it's coming back to me. And then kind of right here is kind of where it's swirling a little bit. It's kind of picked up a little bit in speed. They might have let some more water out. But basically, I just cast it out there, let the bait bend back to the bank, and I was reeling it kind of fast just to keep up with it because it's not deep. And then it's working the bait over the rocks. You know, the water temperature is not that cold anymore. And these fish are up here looking to feed, so they're aggressive. So I don't have to reel it super slow. I'm just trying to keep it above the rocks, out of the snags, and in the fish's mouths. <laughs> Oh, we smoked it. Smoked it. Smoked it. Just kind of holding it there in the current. Oh, man. These fish are fighting good this morning. I'm going to throw him on the stringer, too. This can be our smallest of the three fish on the stringer, but he's still a good keeper sized. Just have him on there for some insurance, just in case. I think the fish are going to bite pretty well all morning. It's supposed to be kind of cloudy. But just in case, for some reason, they quit biting. There we go, another white bass. A little guy, a little guy. We're looking for some more bigs, but we'll take it. I mean, I'm literally just, just letting it drift and just shaking it, barely reeling it. Because if I reel it, I'll reel it all the way in. We don't want to do that. I'm ready for a striper or a hybrid to enter the chat. There's gotta be some down here. I was fishing below a different dam on the same river the other day and I caught a nice striper. There should be some running up in here, too. That's the only way it works. <laughs> it's in my truck. Oh, big daddy. Big daddy. Big daddy. Big daddy. Big daddy. It's a big white bass, I think. Oh, it might be a drum. Oh, it's gosh. It's, going. it's spinning. Oh, it's a drum. Uh, trying to break my rod. Well, I thought we had something interesting just then. It is interesting. Drum are very interesting looking creatures. I think it's our biggest fish of the day. Nice little drum. Not nearly as tasty as a white bass, so we are going to send him back into the blue. Or I guess this is the brown. This, is, this water is definitely not blue.
Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that might be another keeper. White bass, definitely gonna be another keeper. White bass. Look at that bend. Look at the rod. Look at the action. Big boy. Woo! That's what you want. Some meat. That's a quality white bass. Whee! I want old flat daddy. Uh oh. oh what did you get there? I think it's a big drum boy. I think I got down there by the bottom. Could be a flathead. Oh, it's a jumping drum. <laughs> I saw that. You see that thing jump? jump? Look how yellow he is. Oh, that thing. That's like a redfish. Like it's all red. Woo! He looked a little bit more golden when we first hooked him, but he's got some good color to him. That's a pretty drum right there. Fat, healthy, just down there eating shad. Crappy jigs. I just wish that they tasted at least a little bit like redfish or speckled trout. You know, all those fish are in the same family, but why do the, why do we get the short end of the stick here? Look at these not very good tasting freshwater drum. Oh, baby. There we go, I just got hung up and lost my, uh, my bottom jig. That's pitched a single jig back out there. And we're on. I think I, think I kind of like the less weight on here. I was thinking I like the heavier amount of weight to kind of fight this fast current. But I want to cast up there, and this lightweight allows me to kind of bounce it off the rocks a little bit better. It's a good little white bass. There we go. Another good one right there at the bank. That's another good keeper right there, guys. Oh, he's got his head stuck in the current. He can't even, can't even turn. He got that thing choke. He can't even move. He's got that thing eating so good. Come up here to me. Yeah, buddy. Look at that. Swap to the blue and chartreuse. Just to kind of show him a little something different. And that is a good one. I need a bobber. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. This is a nice one, guys. I can't even move him. Look at him. I hope that's a white bass. It's probably a drum, but it could be a white bass. I think it's a, I, I don't know. What I got, dude? Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Look at that thing. That is a huge white bass right there, guys. Oh my goodness. That's a lot better. Guys, look at this unit of a white bass. I definitely think that's our biggest of the day. You know, I got snagged up a little bit ago and I lost my dot, my bottom jig. And I just been throwing a single and I, I can't even get him on penny so so good. Jeez, and I think that, that lighter weight is Allow me to really work it in the rocks a lot better without getting snagged. So I think I'm gonna keep on doing that. And that is a just a big old, big old white bass. She might be post spawn a little bit, might be spawning. I think I'm actually going to send her back. I've got like seven on the string so far. We're gonna send this big girl back into the river and we're gonna get back down there so we can get some more. What a nice fish. Whoop. Heck yeah. Okay, doing a quick little color change. I caught the last few on the little blue and chartreuse. Um, We've been here for a little while, caught several fish. I'm gonna swap it up to the pink and chartreuse. The good thing about this spot is I, I don't feel like there's a limited amount of fish that you could catch because there's just all this water swirling, they have all this water out here, and there can be new fish cycling in and out. So for the ones that may have been here for a little bit, we're just gonna try this right here. It's the pink and chartreuse crappie magnet. Let's see if it makes a difference. There we go. That worked. That worked. Oh, he's a jumper. That worked. Yes. That's another good one. That's a that's a healthy one. Another good stout, good eating sized white bass right there. I'm gonna string him up. I'm gonna count him up to see how many I have. Okay, stringer check, stringer update, stringer update, guys. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A couple might be females, but most of those are males. It didn't feel quite too heavy to carry out, so we're doing good. We might keep maybe one or two more on there. Oh yeah. Another nice white bass on the glow pop 
crappie magnet. And it can be feast or famine with this color, but whenever they're on it, they are on it. That's two good ones in a row on the glow pop. Huh. Oh, I swapped him up on him. That's a begging. I just swapped it up on him, dude. If that's a white bass, it's a big one. Oh yeah, it's a big white bass. Another big old white bass. Oh my goodness. He chomped that thing. Should I put a big bait on? He honestly is not as big as I thought he was. He's on it and he's honestly going on my stringer too, is what's about to happen. Oh, he's peeing on me. Look at how he got that thing. Every time I swap jig colors, I get bit instantly. This time, we swapped to a three inch bright Mr. Twister curly tail. And he was all about it. Okay, I think we have enough white bass now to suffice this to keep. Now if we catch any other like random uh, crazy species like a sauger or a striper or maybe a crazy catfish, we might throw them on there. But that is definitely enough white bass for us. It's a good amount to carry out. All right, guys, we just made the hike back up out of the hole from the spillway. We got all our fish. I think I have eight or nine. I could have 10, I'm not exactly sure. But they were they were quite heavy to pull up. They're all, you know, you know, some are over two pounds, some are probably right under two pounds. Got some really good fish on here. So we got about 20 pounds of fish here. They weren't the easiest to carry up those steep rocks, but we made it. Uh, a little pro tip, guys, if you were ever, you know, making a stringer, you should always make a little handle. That's just a piece of driftwood I picked up off the bank. Wrapped it up, made it a lot easier than wrapping this all up in my hands. But anyways, got some nice fish. We're gonna make, we're gonna continue the walk back to the truck, we're almost there. And uh, we're gonna get these fish back to the house, get them cleaned up. We're gonna cook them up something special for y'all tonight. Thank you all so much for watching the fishing portion of today's video, but I will catch you guys back at the house. All right, y'all already know what's about to happen in here tonight. We've got some of our white bass that we got all cleaned up. That's just a little section of them. Over here we got some taco shells, some taco seasoning, and we got our skillet all preheated with some melted butter. We are going to add some of these guys to here. We're going to put those in here, and we're going to have some white bass tacos. And they're going to be delicious. Those are going to be fresh, and we have been craving some tacos. So let's go ahead and whip these bad boys up. So on these fillets, you can see I trimmed up all the red meat. It's kind of what the filet would look like if it was, if it was whole. You got your big side, you got your little side. The red meat is down the middle. You don't want that because it doesn't taste very good. Perfect amount. So we'll let all these white bass filets cook up. Once they're fully cooked, we'll start letting them kind of flake apart and we'll add the taco seasoning. The oven just dinged a minute ago. We're preheated, so let's put those taco shells in here. And I cannot wait to devour some white bass tacos. One of my favorite things about cooking this particular style of fish tacos is just that it's super easy to make. It didn't, takes no time to whip them up. I mean, it probably took like 15 minutes. And now we are rewarded with a nice, delicious taco. So inside of this, we have our white bass seasoned up with just regular straight up taco seasoning. We've got some avocado. We've got some uh, some Taco Bell hot sauce. And uh, that's basically it in this one. You can definitely add some additional items. Just kind of things we have at the house right now. It's kind of missing a few things that I would like to have, but that's a great way to enjoy a fish taco. So if you've never tried fish taco, I think this is a really just simple and easy um, recipe that I think that you would like. Um, but if you are a fish taco connoisseur and you have some different methods of making them, let me know down in the comment section. But we are going to take a bite of this thing and see how it tastes. We've got several more we need to put together. I should probably hold my plate right here because, <laughs> as we all know, first bite of a taco usually goes everywhere. This thing is hot. This thing is fresh. Let's see how good it is. Man. You know, I thought that the white bass bite down there at the dam today was really good. It was good. This taco is exceptional. It just kind of makes everything just that much better. You know, we caught so many fish today. Probably caught close to 30, if not over 30 fish. And then we get to come home 
and enjoy them today. We can eat some more white bass tomorrow. We can grill some up. We can fry some up. We got a bunch of fillets. But um, yeah, that is awesome. It was a great day, and I'm happy that we're ending it here with fish tacos. Jay's behind the camera. Can you say hi, Jay? Hi, everybody. She refuses to be on this side of the camera. She's kind of been her. I'm so tired. Yeah, we had a big day today. You know, it started we had off fishing. Jammy jams. <laughs> yeah, it's actually today's actually Easter. We uh, I went fishing early, and then we went and celebrated Easter with family and um, Chase Cypress around. He was hunting Easter eggs, and that was that was a time. That was so much fun, but. At least now we're here eating tacos. But with that, I think this is where we're going to call it quits for today's episode. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me down there. Fish for the white bass. It definitely won't be the last time we try to target those fish before spring is over. I think there's a great chance we can go back down there and maybe catch some bigger striped fish, the striper, maybe some hybrids, but time will just tell. And until then, thank you guys so much for watching. If you all enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you on the next one. Bye guys.